So I'm grateful to you for joining us today, and it now gives me great pleasure to hand over to David Nicholson, the Chief Executive of the NHS, to describe the NHS's role in that crucial project. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, my name is David Nicholson, Chief Executive of the NHS, and it's a great pleasure for me to address you this morning. David Willits has already said what a, a great time it is for the, uh, for the NHS, the, the recognition of the contribution of the NHS to British society that we saw in the Olympic opening ceremony was, uh, was heartfelt and fantastic for the NHS. But the British people's commitment to the NHS is not unconditional. We continue to have to, every day, persuade the people of this country, persuade our patients, that the NHS is capable of delivering in the future and the very challenging future that we, that we have. What I want to talk about very briefly this morning is why we're doing what we're trying to do, how we're going to do it, and what specifically we need to do very quickly. In terms of why we're taking the course that we are, 2008-2009, I sat down with the leadership of the NHS and we looked at the preceding few years and the years, the years ahead. And I guess this was going on across the, across the world about a remarkable time, particularly in, amongst the developed economies, where over that period, up to 2008-2009, there'd been significant growth in expenditure in healthcare across, across, the developed, uh, across the developed world. And we could see that going forward, that essentially was ending, that we were moving into a very different uh, 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 arrangement and uh, uh, financial position. So how were we going to deal with that? And there was a, some big choices, I think, for us, as there are for other healthcare systems. There was the option of uh, managed decline, of uh, thinking about how we were going to move the service forward in a way that perhaps in many ways our patients would pay for, in the sense of reducing the offer to them perhaps, reducing our accessibility of patients, all of those sorts of things. Or there was another option, to look with ambition at the future rather than as, as decline. And we took, as, you can, as you'd imagine, I guess most of us in this room would have done, we took the view of ambition. How could we, in the environment that we were going to operate in, improve quality and outcomes for our patients, improve productivity, and use prevention as a really powerful tool to enable us to do that? And that's the conclusion that we came to. And the thing that we, we thought connected all of those things together, the thing, in a sense, that was, is obvious, I guess, to most of the rest of the economy, sometimes not always obvious to us, but the way you connect all of those things together is through innovation. And in particular for, for us, we have a proud record of invention. Our record in relation to adoption and diffusion has not been as good. So focusing our attention, particularly for the NHS, going forward on adoption and diffusion was an important thing for us to do. And as we sat there and worked all of this through, we also had to think what a healthcare system is for for a country. It's obviously for delivering healthcare and health gain for individuals, populations and, and patients, but also it has a responsibility for the broader economy. If we're going to spend lots of public money on uh, health care, we need to make our contribution to generating that money in the first place. And there are a whole series of ways that we can, we can do that. We can get people back to work earlier, we can provide services so we can make sure that our our workforce becomes productive, more productive as we go forward. We can also support our life science industries and be a much better place for people to do business with. And we set our face to absolutely do that, to make sure that through innovation, working with our colleagues in life science industry, we could make both the NHS a better place for patients, but also make our contribution to the, the economy. So how, how are we going to do it? How are we going to take that forward? Inevitably, in these circumstances, leadership is a key, is a key issue. Um, we have some great innovative leaders in the NHS, but we don't have enough, and our depth is not 
great enough. So we set our, our, our ambition to improve the education and training, both of our managerial staff through the various elements of training that they have, but also our clinical staff, starting absolutely at undergraduate level to see how we can create innovation and innovative ways forward for our, our, our workforce as they go through their, 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 their training. A very important part of any kind of healthcare care system and we've set up an NHS Leadership Academy in order to help us help us do that. We've, we've also looked very carefully at this whole issue about um, uptake of, uh, of the best practice that we have and interestingly for the NHS very often when you talk about that great institution that we have, NICE, which does fantastic work for us across the, across the patch, when you think about that it's very often seen as a, as a mechanism in a sense to deprive people from for the best, best services. It's simply not, simply not the case. In fact the biggest challenge for us in the NHS is how we get everyone to get access to that great practice that NICE identifies. So we've set up a whole set of things, that imp an improvement body to help and support NHS organisations to, to, uh, to, to, to put, up, put together the, the best practice that NICE, NICE have. We, we think that we can operate this through transparency, a critical part for us, for every organisation in the country. Um, starting in September, we will set out a, um, a innovation scorecard, which will give you, uh, a, certainly in September, to begin with, 23 of the, uh, uh, of, of the most uh, important, nice, uh, uh, best practice guidelines, and see how every organisation in the country is doing against it. That will give us a really, both us as an NHS, a really clear view about who's uptaking the best practice to be available for our patients, but also for individual organisations themselves to start to benchmark themselves. Many of our organisations um, pride themselves on being innovative. Well, this will be a really good way of transparently looking at it across, the, across the system. We think a very powerful mechanism to make that happen. We're also changing the delivery system that we have. We've, um, we've got some academic health science centres in this in this country where health organisations have come together uh, to work and develop uh, uh, their research and their translational research and to think about their global impact, really important and powerful organisations. We want to extend some of that work across the rest of the NHS and we've asked for uh, 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 people to put forward ideas to, to, to become academic health science networks, organisations of hospitals and health systems who can come together to spread good practice. We want to licence them, we want to allocate innovation funds to them to enable them to do that. And uh, they came in last week and, and we've had 17 applications that cover every single hospital in the country. So every single hospital in the country potentially will be part of an academic health science network uh, by the beginning of, of next year. A, a, a very simplified mechanism to do business with across the NHS, bringing academics, bringing business and bringing NHS deliverers together in one set of networks, a really important part of what we, we do. And finally, we wanted to get the incentives better in the system. We've developed a set of payment systems for those of you in the NHS called Sequin, which enable us to support and help uh, people who deliver innovative solutions, that's being extended now to 2.5% of income for your average, average hospital, not an insignificant amount of resource to encourage people. We've announced uh, uh, in June a £1 million uh, innovation prize for a breakthrough in terms of the care of, of people with diabetes and for the care of people with Dementia. So starting to encourage and develop an environment where innovators can come forward and put forward to the service as a whole the real improvements that they need to, to make. So we've set out a whole series of things about how we're going to do that. But in a sense, creating that environment where innovation can flourish, which is really, is really important, but we need to see some real benefits straight away. That's why we've identified seven high impact changes that we want to see everybody in the country engaged in and involved in and making, making happen. 
I won't go through all seven of them, but one of them, for example, is our uh, telemedicine and telehealth proposals based on a remarkable ran random control trial that we did, the biggest in the, in the world, which showed by the use of telehealth and telemedicine, we could significantly reduce uh, emergency admissions into hospital uh, by 20%, reducing admissions into accident and emergency department by 15%, reducing costs by 8%, but most remarkably of all, reducing mortality by 45%. So we've been working with the industry to make that a, a, a reality. We've, um, we've just announced uh, we, we plan to have 3 million people involved in this over the next few years. We've announced the first 100,000 uh, units that we've, uh, we've uh, negotiated with the, with the industry, where the industry is paying up front for the capital and we're paying for the, the revenue, a fantastic set of arrangements for us in the NHS and the industry overall, showing how the NHS at scale can work with, with industry and we want to see that drop being driven much faster in the, in the future. And finally, we need to think about our relationship with the, with, with, with the world. There are literally tens of thousands of connections between the NHS and, and global health. We see it all in individuals. Um, uh, many of our doctors have come from overseas. If you go in, in, in many of the countries in this room, you will see uh, people who've been trained in the NHS working in your, in your facilities, our organisations. Uh, whether it's University Hospital Birmingham or Imperial or working with partners across the, across the world, we want to do that in a much more organised way, hence the development of Healthcare UK, a mechanism by which wherever you are in the world, you can connect with the NHS and have a way into a system which sometimes from outside can, fit, can see uh, can, confusing. And similarly for the NHS, if we want to do business with the, with the world, we can use Healthcare UK to enable us to do that. In that way, I think, we can get both the benefits for patients in this country. We think we need to significantly improve outcomes for our patients, like most healthcare systems would do on the one hand, but also we can play a role both in bringing the best possible practice across the world for our own patients, but also making our contribution to improving outcomes across the rest of the world. Thank you.